Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. RDNA 3 and RTX 40 are both going to launch next year. But there's been an awful lot of speculation and guesses on the internet regarding the power consumption of both of these GPUs. So I wanted to start this video out really kind of discussing what I've been hearing from my sources regarding what you can really expect you're going to need in terms of a power supply for these upcoming graphics cards. And there's kind of good news as well as some bad news. But first, a quick message from this video's sponsor. If you've just built a shiny new PC, you'll need a genuine copy of Windows so you can enjoy all of the features such as personalized themes and of course getting rid of that annoying activation watermark. We're partnering with WhoKeys to give you guys a great discount on Windows 10 keys. And throughout November, there's a 30% off discount by using the coupon code RGT during checkout. I've purchased several keys from them in the past under a personal non-RGT affiliated account and they've all worked flawlessly with delivery being rather quick. After November, the coupon code reverts back to 25% off. So if you want to pick up a copy of Windows for as little as $12 or a cheap and legit copy of Office, then check out the links in the video description below and use coupon code RGT. So I think we all know the performance targets of RDNA 3 at this point. I've mentioned them one billion times and also they've been pretty, you know, common around the internet that we are looking at at least a minimum of 2.5 times, but probably more like three times. Basically, very early internal testing from AMD seemed to be providing us a 2.5 times figure. This is over the 6900 XT, just to be clear. And basically the internal target seemed to be around three times. And this does seem to be what AMD have hit with Narve 31. As a quick reminder, there is 31, 32, and 33, with 33 being the monolithic die and 31 and 32 not being a monolithic die, they're essentially chimplets. We've discussed the specs a lot of times at this point, but we're looking at an awful lot of shaders, over 15,000, of course. And this is all wrapped up with next generation Infinity Cache on kind of a, a 3D stacked design. We've already seen kind of a preview of this of CDNA2, and honestly, I suspect that the RDNA 3 implementation or Narve 31 and 32 its implementation anyway is going to be a little different in not just in terms of perhaps <laughs> compared to CDNA 2 but also perhaps what you kind of expect it to be but ultimately it really boils down to two GCDs and an MCD the latter of which of course being the Infinity Cache. Now I've gone over these specifications so many times in the past but I do think it's very important for us to understand what they are just so that you guys can can get a kind of a glimpse of what we're dealing with here. Now, speaking of a glimpse, there was a very fascinating slide that AMD did kind of sneak in to their recent server-focused event. And this was mostly pertaining to Zen 4, which of course is going to be built on the 5NM process from TSMC. And what we do know is that RDNA 3, well, it's going to be built on the 5 and N process from TSMC. And given we know roughly the performance targets of RDNA 3, you can do somewhat of a math and kind of figure out what the power consumption figure is for RDNA 3. However, one thing it doesn't necessarily do is account for internal tweaks and changes that AMD may do to the silicon itself, which lowers power consumption. We saw this play out rather well with Narve 2X. AMD did a lot of internal efficiency tweaking. They actually pulled in a lot of engineers that were working on Ryzen to help them out there. And I'm sure you'll agree that ultimately RDNA 2 did very well. And of course, it wasn't just energy efficiency in terms of, well, not gobbling up loads of power, but also a lot of those tweaks and optimizations were incredibly inf uh, important and influential for helping to get the clock frequencies, although they're not necessarily 100% related, but still, they're kind of on the same coin anyway. And obviously the clock frequency for RDNA 2 was so important because, well, the Infinity Cache obviously is somewhat tied to the clock frequency and the Infinity Cache ultimately was the direction AMD decided to go with RDNA 2 because, well, basically they did not want to uh, go with faster memory and they didn't want to go with a wider bus, so it just made logical sense. And that's ultimately what Infinity Cache was. 
So what about the power consumption targets then for Narve 31? Well, I'm actually hearing for the reference design. Now, I want to stress this is for the reference design. We're going to be looking at just shy of 400 watts, around 375 to be precise. I have heard from a couple of folks, though, that the AIB models, AMD, may allow them to clock higher, or rather, at the very least, have higher um, power consumption targets and obviously this could be in the form of like power limits or what have you. Now I don't have solid information on those. I've been told that it's probably not going to be super higher although one source has told me like 450 watts which honestly is kind of a lot and that is definitely PSU bleeding levels of territory. Now 375 watts is not awful. You know it's like it's not exactly sipping on the power juice, but you know you couldn't you couldn't get a couple of hamsters to kind of run on a wheel to power it. And well, I guess if they're giant hamsters the size of you know the the Eiffel Tower or something, maybe they could. But you know, generally speaking, this is still an awful lot of power, and it does beg the question regarding the cooling solution, which is going to be interesting anyway because of the die configuration of what we're looking for, Narvi Thirty One, but also just other things as well, like. Yeah, I suspect putting this in with something like older leg running heavy AVX instructions on a small form factor rig would be challenging. Let's go with challenging. Now, this does bring us to Lovelace, because ultimately Lovelace is the architecture which, of course, is going to be facing off against, uh, well, AMD. And this is kind of interesting. So I am actually hearing that, yes, Lovelace is a lot more power hungry. And I'm certainly not the only one that said this. Folks such as Cupity7 Kimmy and Grayman have even said the same thing, that we could be looking at 500-ish watts. And yeah, that does seem to be the case. I'm hearing 450 watts minimum, possibly higher for Lovelace. Now, power targets, I'm sorry, there's like this little fly thing that's buzzing around. I tried to like get rid of it earlier but I couldn't and I've given up so it it is what it is you see my eyes go zhoot, then you know why anyway getting back to my point you know the thing is with power targets and power consumption is that it's very you know you get some people that are like I don't care if it's an extra 300 watts I want that extra two frames per second and others you know they would rather undervolt their GPU or add frame rate targets or whatever frame rate caps excuse me because that's kind of how they roll. And obviously it does depend on you, your environment, and a ton of other things. And, you know, there are some games, ultimately you don't need like 500 frames a second. You know, 30 or 60 is fine, <laughs> like a point and click adventure, for example. I know why point and click adventure just came into my head. I really need to replay a couple of old school ones. Anyway, getting back to the point, the bad news for NVIDIA, though, is I am hearing that the power consumption wasn't actually originally as bad as what we are looking at now. Basically, uh, now two sources have told me the same thing, and I have pretty high confidence in both of them, that the power targets were actually a lot lower. They were more in line with what we saw previously, you know, 350-ish watts, maybe 400 and the highest, but basically, because of what we're seeing with Narve 31 and its ilk, they basically just crank the power targets, or rather power consumption figures up, the TDP, as high as possible because they need to be as competitive as possible to Narve 31. And it does seem like NVIDIA will, technically speaking, be slower in terms of rasterization anyway than AMD. Now, I have to say that until I see benchmarks, I don't believe anything. <laughs> And obviously there are other questions like what about different workloads? What about different, you know, gaming workloads? How about when DLSS is factored in? I'm still hearing that DLSS 3 is definitely real. Yet another source has told me that it's real. And again, it seems that it's even better in terms of image quality. There does seem to be a number of improvements in terms of image quality. Ray tracing performance seems to have gone up significantly as well. And I do suspect that FSR 2 is also a thing or at least possibly a variant thereof. I don't know if we're going to hear, see it called FSR, for all we know it could be called, you know, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. But what I do believe is that it's probably going to incorporate something like motion vectors or be AMD-like in terms of how it's handled. Recently, 
NVIDIA are, of course, pushing NIS or NVIDIA image sharpening. And they've also released the uh, DLSS 2.3 update. It was actually part of that press briefing. But yeah, um, long story short, I was sick again. This time with something entirely different. I think I caught the plague off of someone at the gym or something like that. Not too bad, but yeah, it's just kind of meant I've been out of commission a couple of days. But I am looking into um, that and also a couple of other things that I've been working on for both AMD and uh, uh, NVIDIA based. So that will be out on the channel next, uh, well, as soon as possible. So apologies for being, you know, plagued again, but huh, well, you can't choose when you get sick. Ultimately, though, it's going to be a very interesting situation because I do believe that AMD are probably going to be ahead in terms of traditional raster performance, but I do think that Nvidia are definitely going to have their wins. It's going to be very interesting to me how all of this plays out. I also uh, want to talk to you guys just really briefly about the RTX uh, 2060 12 gigabyte cards. And yep, um, you know, I'm not really going to shock anyone. I am actually hearing they're real and the <laughs> well, yeah, um, they seem at the moment, I'm hearing they may be focused mostly towards miners, um, and the, they don't necessarily seem to be like super gaming focused. It'll be very interesting to see if that's true. Honestly, you know, I'm okay with them, um, you know, releasing the card or not, like it's a RTX 2060 12 gigabyte it's not anything super exciting it's not anything you know super unique or anything like that so it'll be very interesting i'm also hearing that nvidia will indeed be launching new cards early next year like the 3090 ti uh, grayman has already gone over the specs of this gpu and i do believe it is real um, according to one of my sources i'm just throwing this in here as a bonus but yeah there is still speculation that they may not release the damn thing and honestly, I'm not too sure, like specification wise, it's not, it's not like it's going to be a huge bump in performance, right? It's like, you know, it, it, it's, it's cool, but I don't think it's going to be enough to make people go, well, I've got 3080 Ti or a 3090, gosh, I must upgrade. I mean, maybe you'll get some hardcore enthusiasts that would, but just generally speaking, even if there wasn't shortages, I don't think it's going to set the world alight. Well, I suppose it might depend on the TDP. It could possibly set the atmosphere on fire, I suppose. I'm sorry, I'm in a weird mood. Anyway, with that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you have, well, you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video, and I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.